Josh, we're Catholic. We only sing one or two verses. <laughs> oh, God's mercy endures forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With you. This uh, past Thursday, we were privileged, that is, our parish, to uh, host all of the teachers for the eastern region of our diocese. I told the story my first day in grade school. I mentioned this once before. My first day, 60 kids, Sister Halloween, St. Alphonsus Wexford. I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Nobody told me there was a bathroom in the school. So I walked home <laughs> a half a mile. My mother said, what are you doing here? And well, I told her. And then, she says, get back to school. <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, our kids will be starting grandkids back to school. We pray for them. We pray for ourselves as we pause now and call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, we're sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the
O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel as Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. It does not please you to serve the Lord. Decide today whom you will serve the gods your father served beyond the river, or the gods of Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the people through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and to those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. Watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the
reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Was I given the true information that there's a little guy named Roman Lewis Candiato here? Is that true? It is true. Well, all the people who are here because of this little guy's baptism, would you just kindly stand for a moment? 
You just stand. Maybe we can just welcome everybody from Little Romans family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A very good uh, Irish name. Uh, <laughs> be uh, very Italian. Little commercial. I'd like to particularly address the wives. Uh, there's a men's program for deepening uh, a man's uh, one's spirituality called "That Man Is You," and there's there'll be men at the back of the church and outside to. Uh, it's um, the men meet on Saturdays at seven, and wouldn't it be more marvelous if you had like a good spiritual virtuous uh, man as uh, your partner? So I was told to say that, uh, but men think about that uh, to be able to grow deeper with the Lord, and I'm also told there's a food truck outside someplace to uh, you know get a little bite if uh, you so are inclined. Oh, my. You all part of that family? <laughs> you as family, you get it. It's about the family. It's about and, and my hope and my prayer that in a sense that we can make this community of called now Christ the Divine Shepherd, you know, a place where this little guy can grow and thrive and get to know the Lord Jesus, to love the church not just as buildings but as people, and that one sense that he feels welcomed and belonged and, uh, and is a part of some great adventure. So that's, you know... <laughs> my prayer for, for, for this little guy and really, frankly, for all of us. Uh, well, I'm beginning the homily now, so I'm going into another little stage. Right now, we walk, that we, the people, we who are alive, and we walk through the wreckage of a broken world filled with a COVID virus lurking everywhere, so much so that Deacon Mike just yesterday buried a 56-year-old man who died of COVID. And many could say, well, a lot of people were, had you know, uh, compromised immune systems beforehand and would have possibly died anyway. That's true. But still, uh, we're required to wear masks uh, doing uh, the Holy Communion. Anyway, uh, I don't know about you, but so many of our hearts are just heavy with sorrow, really outraged by this, this scourge that just doesn't seem to want to go away. And thanks be to God that we're able to come back to Mass and I'm able to hear that lovely voice of that child screaming out, I mean it. It's just good to hear, like, real people. You know, we're back, somewhat back as a, as a community of faith. Uh, and, and so in regard to our faith, and we rebuild our lives one brick at a time. Well, there was centuries ago, there was a, a rich young man who lived in the heart of Italy. Uh, his name wasn't Roman. He was a close friend of Romans. His name was, uh, and he told, told, told people something bluntly, and that was the Lord says to rebuild my church, and that was Francis of Assisi. And he did just that, to rebuild the church, that he helped transform the church, helped it to rediscover its roots. And so he lived in a time of corruption, deceit, and sin, well, how about us? Look what goes on, whatever side of the fence you're on or thinking, with our government, our church, the church alive, whatever. You know, we have it all ourselves. Uh, but St. Francis heard from the living God a transcendent message of hope, a message of healing, a message of love. And in one sense, you and I, we can do no less, if not for ourselves, but again, I think of little Roman. 
you know, what kind of world are we kind of passing on? Um, we can make a difference. Christ lives in you. He's your Christ. And if you have a devotion to our Blessed Mother, today is the feast day of the Queenship of Mary. Ask Mary. She stood under the cross with the Savior and St. John. She is all in and ready to help. In our sacred scriptures today, our gospel story talks about the bread of life. I, I, I marvel when I come into a Catholic church and I look where the Eucharist is to see that light, to see that candle burning that Jesus and goodness and truth and beauty. God is here. Well, we've been listening to this Bread of Life narrative for the last number of weeks, and it, it began with an astounding miracle. I don't know about you. I don't believe in miracles. I count on miracles. I look for miracles. Well, what was the miracle in this Bread of Life discourse? Well, there was a few scraps of food. People were hungry. And what did the Lord Jesus do? He fed the multitudes. It was almost like it was the beginning all over again in the book of Genesis. Out of nothing or out of chaos, which is tohu wa bohu in the Hebrew, that the living God made everything. And in this particular case, in the Bread of Life discord, he made enough food to satisfy everything. And so I think with that in mind, I think it's useful for us to remember the first words that God speaks in the book of Genesis, which means in the beginning. Ooh, what did he say? He says, let there be light. And we need light now more than ever. Light. To scatter our doubts and our fears, light. To point out the way, light. To clean and disinfect and remove all shadows, all suspicions, all sufferings and pain. Light to help remake the world, to remake the world one brick at a time, not Francis of Assisi, but ourselves so that we can make a church like for little Roman. And it doesn't matter if we're 105, you know, we're little in God's eyes. We do it for each other. We never, ever, ever give up. The Lord is with us always. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. He's with us. Let there be light. And let there be people who will keep that light burning. It won't be long. At this baptism, the Godmother, the Godfather will hold that light. It's the light of Christ. And hopefully it's a light that's still burning in us, no matter how crazy this world, no matter how crazy this church, no matter how crazy this priest, no matter how crazy you are. Um, get it? We're all a little crazy. A little schizophrenia in all of us. Well, years ago, there was a remarkable First Communion. And if you can just picture this, dozens of boys and girls in white dresses and suits, they were in the middle of the church for their First Communion. But the church was barely a church at all. It was in ruins. Windows shattered, walls crumbling, pockmarked by bullets, ceilings all but gone, scaffolding erected everywhere as workers were trying to repair the damage brought about by a long and brutal civil war in Syria. But in the middle of all this, here is what the bishop told those children. He said, I wanted to have your first communion here in this broken, damaged church to let you know that there is hope. And you know, hope isn't wishful thinking. Hope is a certainty anchored in the sacred heart of Jesus Christ. It's an anchor that is anchored in your sacred heart, my sacred heart. A message of hope. And his message was this to those young folks. You will help to rebuild this church 
not just the crumbling building around him. He said, you are hope. And we will do this together. We will do this together. <laughs> re remember, <laughs> you know, these COVID deaths and all kind of deaths, we bury so many people here, which is, uh, hey, if I was told tonight that I'm going to go, I watch me say a different one. I have a friend of mine, he says he's jealous when he hears that people die. I hope I can say that, but probably when it happens to me, I'll go, no, <laughs> stay far away, a miracle, give me the drugs or whatever. But we're just passing through this life. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, our life is like a snap. It's a breath. <laughs> oh. I still love that story of the lady. You know, I'll probably tell you it another 40 times. She was 17, she went to bed, she was 94, and she just said, where did my life Everybody, Let's make a world for Rome and in ourselves that in a sense we say, what's going on in the world? But whenever people would come into this community, say, see how they love each other. There's something different here. There's something in the air, in the spirit. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. The people who have taken seriously the cross of Jesus Christ, that my job is to die to myself, to pick up the cross, and to follow Jesus carefully, fully, each day. He's calling us to be saints. He's calling you. God never abandons his church, and his church is his body. Uh, and what did we hear in the gospel today from St. Peter? You alone have the words of everlasting life, and so let's pray f for the church. We're Christ's body. Let's pray for priests, bishops. Let's pray for those who are suffering now. That is not only family members, but there's Haiti, Afghanistan, there's the hurricanes. You can fill in, our, uh, fill in the blanks. We pray that we, we meet this moment, this time, with courage and hope. Do not be afraid 366 times in the New Testament. Do not be afraid. Be courage and hope. Again, hope is an anchor of certainty. <laughs> this is a moment in time. It's a challenge for each one of us to be who God calls us to be, a beloved daughter, a son, and who, what he needs us to be. We're called to be the next generation of saints, to pick up the crumbling bricks of not only a cathedral, but of our relationships, uh, various incidents, events, encounters, pick these all up and we take them to the Lord at the foot of the cross and we rebuild what was fallen <laughs> and we trust in the Lord. Well, I'm moving to conclusion. Uh, with faith, with hope, and with love, all things are possible. All things are possible. And I know that we not only can do it, but we will do it because what we have, and what is it that we have? We have the Eucharist. You and I, we have the bread of life, the living God. Because of what we have, Christ, and what, will, what we will be, and that is, we have an eternal destiny, uh, will be so much greater than this tohu wabohu, this chaos. For we're people of hope, anchored in love, we wait on the Lord, and we pray that again we will meet this moment with courage and hope. We've decided, like Joshua in that first reading, we've decided to follow the Lord. And St. Peter in the Gospel then to conclude fully, Master, to whom shall we go? You, Jesus, you and you alone, only Jesus else. Only Jesus, you have the words of eternal life.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from true God, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. By salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. In heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe. Proceed to the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son as the glory of God. through the prophets. I believe. Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord calls us by name. He really does listen. We lift up our petitions to the living God. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For priests and religious, may the Spirit shield them and strengthen them for the building of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to all war and for those who work for peace among nations and peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from illness, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them complete healing and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of Christ, the divine shepherd parish, may we embrace the unity of our call as Catholic Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who offer their time and talent in our faith community, may the Lord bless them and encourage them in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially Joseph Agazio and Jack Hogue, may they soon come to rest in the everlasting peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Clara del Torre, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for little Roman, but not only Roman, for mom, dad, the entire family. We pray for his life, 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 eternal life, the life of faith, the faith, life of the family, for this little guy and the family, and our family, that we can be alive. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And I conclude with St. Teresa of Avila, let nothing disturb you, nothing frighten you, all things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to her or him who possesses God. God alone suffices. We beg all these graces through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second collection today is for Catholic Communications.
And together we pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Father Almighty. Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, graciously bestow on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Overcome with paschal joy, we sing the him of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You're the font of all holiness. Make holy these gifts. Send down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body, the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he, he took the chalice and again, giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out 
for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. story of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life, this saving chalice, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with all the clergy, and remember, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and grant us the peace, the unity of the kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now let us offer another sign of Christ's peace. Peace to you, dear Mike. Hope your day goes well.
And behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. sustain you through days of sorrow and woe. My wine will flow like a sea of gladness to flood the depths of your soul. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say it again. Just a reminder that the uh, man, that man is you group will be in the back. They meet every Saturday. They meet at 7 o'clock in the morning. They promise to get you out by 8.30. They give you donuts and coffee. It's a good program. It begins again on September the 11th this year. And don't forget, I've seen a whole bunch of food trucks going down. So the Divine Mercy Academy's food truck uh, food sale is today. So you can eat before you leave. I'm not going to those food trucks. I'm going to Roman's party. <laughs> not the brightest uh, guy, but I'm not that dumb. <laughs> Your family gets it. Your family gets it. It's about life and people, relationships. Uh, I love that you love your babies, and oh, that's uh, just so fabulous. Oh, congratulations, congratulations, yeah. I think just congratulations, mom and dad. And life, life, life. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Yeah.